What if Archimedes would have known functions? The story which I'm going to tell you borrows from material I've taught at single variable calculus courses or the extension school. There is no new math. It's part of what one calls quantum calculus or calculus without limits. We are going back 20,000 years ago when mathematicians were writing on bones, like the Inshango bone, and I want you to think about these marks as a function, as a constant function, one, 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 one. And introducing the number is a summation process, like four is one plus one plus one plus one. And we can go backwards by taking differences, four minus three is one. And we can continue that, and we can add up the, the numbers, and we get triangular numbers. Gauss did that when he was a six-year-old boy. Or we can add up these triangular numbers, stacking triangles on top of each other, and we get a volume called tetrahedral numbers. So here you see the Pascal triangle again. Uh, let's boldly call these rows functions, like one, x, x squared over two factorial, x to the three over three factorial, etc. <coughs> we have a summation which goes down and a difference, differentiation which, go, which goes up. This is a quantum deformation of the algebra we know, but it's done in such a way that the derivative of x to the n is n times x to the n minus one, the formula we know. We can also take the exponential function, take the compound interest formula, one plus a to the x. a is the interest, x is the number of years. That's the, your fortune. You take the derivative, what you gain is a times uh, one, uh, the exponential function. This is already the fundamental theorem of calculus. Summing the difference is fx minus f0. Taking the difference of the sum is fx. And the picture is already a proof without words. But it's such an important result that we are going to prove it. <coughs> and uh, here is the proof of the first result. We take the sum of the differences and you see that the middle terms cancel away. This is a telescopic sum and only the boundary terms uh, survive and we have fn minus f0. Very important principle which goes to multivariable calculus, differential geometry, this cancellation. The second proof is even easier. We have two terms, we take the difference of the sums, and only one term survives, and we get the function back. <coughs> this is a very important principle. The fundamental theorem of calculus links something easy with something hard, and because we have a link between these two things, the hard becomes easy. There are generalization, I took the step one. You can take uh, step size h, which is a positive number. Everything, changed, uh, everything stays the same. We can also change the notation to Leibniz notation. And then we have the fundamental theorem of calculus as we are all familiar with. <coughs> but we don't take any limits. This is true for all functions. <coughs> we can even get more functions like uh, we have already seen the exponential function. If you take an imaginary interest rate, we get this, the real and imaginary part, we get the cosine and sine, that's a definition, and immediately we get the result that the derivative of sine is cosine and the derivative of the cosine is sine. These are deformed functions, they are not the functions we are familiar with, but very close. And now we can harvest their fruits, we can sum things, like sum power, sum the sine, so cosine or exponential functions. Here we have on the left hand side, we see the, the old squares, we can sum them up and get the immediately a formula because we know how to integrate or we can sum up exponential and get explicit formulas. We want more functions. We can multiply two functions. Again, these are functions that don't even have to be continuous. This is the Leibniz rule. It's an exact rule. You can look at it. It's perfectly fine for every function, f and g. But that's, uh, uh, if, you, if you turn it around, you get Abel summation, which is a fantastic tool, too. The chain rule, also a very nice formula. I actually forgot the h there, which I just noticed. <laughs> But this formula is exact also for every function f and g. This is true. And if you look at this formula, you see why the chain rule is true. <coughs> so um, let's shift gears and go to 1b, Taylor theorem. Of course, the Taylor theorem holds exactly the same way. The functions x, x squared, these are these deformed functions, and f is any function. And uh, this Taylor series is actually has been known by Newton and Gregory already. I only started with proving it here. It's a nice exercise to prove this. These are finite sums by induction. You can quickly show this. And it's fantastic. You can apply it to the exponential function. We have the normal if the formula we are all familiar with. Of course, these are the deformed functions. And here is an example 
arithmetic result, 32 is 1 plus 5 plus 5 times 4 over 2, etc. That's the Taylor series expansion. <coughs> we can apply this to data fitting. Here, I took the 20 last years of the Dow Jones index and just computed the Taylor series and <laughs> got the function. No linear algebra, no statistics needed. It's much, much faster than linear algebra. <coughs> we can uh, even shift more gears and go to uh, multi Oh, no, I didn't. Uh, I, I also wanted differential equations. Differential equations also here. We don't have to rewrite the books. Everything you see in the books is true. Just replace the derivative with a D and deform the functions. This is the harmonic oscillator. Of course, the cosine and sine are these deformed functions. <coughs> Everything is the same uh, uh, as we uh, know it. Multivariable calculus. A function is a, a scalar function is a function on the vertices of a graph. The vector field is a function on the edges of a graph. The gradient is the difference between the function values. And if we add up the gradient along a curve, we just have the boundary terms which survive. That's the fundamental theorem of line integrals. And it's the same cancellation process we have seen. Stokes theorem, uh, the curl of a vector field is just a function on triangles. And if you look at how triangles put, uh, fit together, there are cancellations between every uh, uh, match and only the boundary term survives and we have the Stokes theorem as we know it. <coughs> so would Archimedes have been able to find the fundamental theorem of calculus? I think the answer is yes. If he would not have been given the sword, but the concept of a function. Thank you. <laughs>